Hey guys, I'm not sure you can hear me yet, but I am here in Hawaii, in the Big Island, and uh, I'm actually in the, the lava flow bed. That means underneath me used to be hot lava. And so, it's pretty amazing. Jeff and I, yesterday, we went to, um, uh, to the top, the highest mountain here. I think it's the tallest mountain in the world. If you start at the base of the in, the, in the sea, all the way up to the very top, and it was freaking cold, like severely cold. My hands were hurting so bad. But I got some good photos. I have already edited a few of them. I hadn't uploaded any yet, but I'm getting ready to share, share some of them here probably today or tomorrow. And um, this is really amazing, you know, out here in this, in the, where lava used to flow, the, the hot burning um, was flowing here and a lot of stuff happening. But uh, I thought about a metaphor about this. You know, we talk about volcano and they, they, they explode uh, hot lava. And it kind of like some people that I've worked with in the past, you know, they say, well, how do you deal with anger? How do you deal with angry people or angry self? And most people don't realize that anger is a very powerful tool to control and manipulate people. Uh, and people who are angry justify their own anger. They, um, they, you know, this, but where does anger come from? Why are we angry? Well, a lot of times anger is a learned process built from our experiences with our parents, watch our mom and dad act from it. They, um, or you've had hurts and you, you're angry at people. So, um, yeah, it's really crazy. It's really, really crazy. Why are we angry? And so, you know, I've been working this last two weeks in Abilitat with um, the, the, the addicts. Now, we're talking about people who have a good reason to be angry, hurt. They've been raped, beaten, abused. Their whole life, their whole family was nothing but drugs. And to see these young men and women, some of them in 25 different treatment centers, one of them 19 treatment centers, and and I say, why are you addicted? What drives your addiction? And basically, it's always it's always the same. I want to feel better. I don't want to feel what happened. I don't want to deal what happened. And so, a lot of times, you know, they go to these treatment centers, and you know, I ask the same question: um, Has any treatment center ever changed a bad memory? Ninety-nine point nine nine percent says no. Any treatment center ever show you how to change a bad feeling? No. Does any treatment center show you how to change your relationship with the drugs? No. And the reason is, is because they don't know how. They don't know how. They think it's a, a, a genetic problem. They think it's a um, uh, a disease, and it's not. You know, it's interesting. These guys are in a bill attack. There's no drugs. And I said, are you addicted? No. Well, it's easy not to be addicted when there's no drugs. The young lady who is who graduated from their, their program for two years, she never thought about drugs, never even drugs were even part of their thinking. But when she found out her husband cheated on her and was cheating on her, and, and then, of course, the boyfriend started cheating on her, next thing you know, she's feeling miserable. Why does her addiction just kicks in when you're feeling bad? And the only reason is because they don't know how to deal with their emotions. And so just like with the emotion of anger, where does it come from? It comes from memories and resources and issues. And so, so sitting here in this amazing place, what's this called? This is a caldera. Caldera? Caldera? Caldera. Jeff says this is called a caldera, which is basically a pool of lava. Right? Yeah, Jeff Dash, he's there. Used to be. Now it's not. Yeah, now it's about a mile that way. But, you know, I we went over there and we saw the amazing lava coming out. He said he's never seen it like that. And so, so you know, we're talking about why we do what we do. What is the, the driving force behind everything we do? And it's basically memory, either conscious memory or unconscious memory. And so, um, and the weird thing is, is like when I ask people, say, what's five times five? And they say, it's 25. I said, notice that you didn't have to go back to kindergarten or first grade or fifth grade and try to go back to your math tables and say, oh, five times five is 25. It just pops out of your mouth, out of your mind. It just shows up. And that's how other problems like addictions, like fears, angers, traumas. And they say, well, how do you deal with this addiction to anger or the addiction to 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 getting the same problem over and over again in relationships. And it's not an addiction. 
you're not addicted. You're just trying to find the best coping skill that you can find to help relieve the pain and hurt. And that's all. And so one of the things I realize when I teach people how to change resources, which are your memories, and make peace with the resources, not deal with it, tough it through, ignore it, but actually change it. And when you actually change it, there's nothing to battle. There's no fight because your unconscious has new set of resources. And so that's what Faster T is about, re-imprinting your mind, memory reconsolidation. And there is no other process in the world that is so efficient and thorough is what I would call faster of tea. Now there are others who work, it does work, but sometimes it just takes too long. And I don't know about you, I don't want to spend all my time in therapy. I don't want to spend my time spending hours and hours dealing with a problem, let's change it in five minutes or 10. Just like the young man I was working with, he's, he's I think he's like 40 years old, a father of two children, divorced. And he was uh, uh, in Afghanistan. He saw his buddies were killed. This little girl he wanted to help and he couldn't. She, in, in this torment of all this death and stuff, stuff he could never tell anybody. And then all of a sudden, I say, you know, I know that's pretty tough. And he said, hey, I'm here to be honest with you. I'll share whatever you want. I'll, I'm willing to let go. I said, let me, give, me, give me one memory. Don't even tell me what it is. And let me let you trust this effect. So we t addressed a major memory. This is a major memory. And we changed it less than five minutes. And he was, uh, he was said, okay, I'm ready. So for the next three hours, we did three hour sessions as we started changing this stuff. Now this guy was waking up six times a night, always on the, always on the edge, walking around like he's still in Afghanistan. But he said, after that first session, Robert, I slept all night. I don't feel like I'm there anymore. That's one session. And then we started addressing his drugs and the pain and the hurts and emotional associations and the reason why. And all of a sudden he says, man, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready for my children. I want to create my life. Because he was a gunner. That's what he was trained to do as a gunner. And of course, now he has college waiting on him. He's got his two children waiting on him. He's got a whole new life. And yes, he is tapping on himself. So he had all this anger, hurt, and rage inside of himself. And he couldn't change it until we showed him how. And I said, have you been tapping on yourself? Man, I've been tapping on myself. You know, I tap on myself for the days of things that bother you, and I just sleep so good. And so that's what we're doing. Anger, what is anger? Where does it come from? It bulls up from the unconscious. Bulls up inside, and you don't plan to be angry. Your parents didn't say, hey, I'm gonna teach you how to be like me, angry, hurt. They just have experiences. And so what we wanna do, if you have problems, guys, Discover your mind. Discover what you're doing within yourself, the mechanics of your thoughts. Learn how to like you, love you, be kind to you within yourself. Because what you do inside yourself, you're going to do to other people. And you'll know a person by what comes out of their mouth. You'll know a person by how they act and perform. And you can, you can tell, you know. So what I want you to do, if you're listening to me today, I'll show you this, this amazing spot. And I'll even add some videos on my, on my channel soon. Make peace with yourself. Learn to like you from the inside out. Sure, there's people who have problems. Don't let it be yours. Tap your part out and just say, entertaining. That's what I do. <laughs> people say, well, how do you deal with this crazy stuff? You know, I deal with, I see, I hear a lot of stuff. And for me, I just say, it's, I know it's not real. It was real. And, you know, of course, if someone says things about me, I know it's about them. And I just say, hmm entertaining I'm curious I sure glad I don't do that to me so I say make some peace with yourself love yourself and be kind to yourself and remember what you do inside yourself you do to other people so be nice to you because people who are nice to themselves will treat other people better that's Robert Smith I'm here in Hawaii and this is pretty amazing Jeff and I took a little break a little away from the crazies but we take our own with us so we tap on that too so anyway I'll, show, I'll let you look around and you can see, oh, you can't see it now. It used to be right over there with some steam coming out. And this is where we came up, down, and go up. There's a lot of people here. And look at the sky.
Anyway, so this Robert Smith here in Hawaii. Amazing place. I've been coming here for seven years, helping people with addictions. The first two years, I was trying to figure out, why are you addicted? What drives your addiction? And I figured it out. I just don't want to feel bad. And I'm using my best coping skill to change me. So if you can better develop better skills, change the resources that bubble from within inside yourself, clean that out, then next thing you know, you'll be just doing grand. That's Robert Smith. Peace. Love you guys. Keep that on yourself. Oh, by the way, I should tell you about a couple of seminars coming up. We've got Oklahoma here in February. Oklahoma Level 1, which is how to heal yourself, change yourself, work on yourself, and the foundation that I use to help create changes in people's lives in Oklahoma City. Also, we have um, going to Australia. We have a Level 2 for those of you who want to do Level 2. And also, we're doing Level 1 in Adelaide, Australia. Now, most people don't realize the effectiveness of Level 1 and Faster of T. First of all, there are people who've come to Level 1 who were severely physically ill. Rose Hartgrove, for example, had lupus and had, has, she has a report showing her lupus in her blood. She had a two-hour Faster of T crossfire session at Level 1 and started working on herself. Within less than six months, the doctor's calling her and said, there's no lupus, your blood is normal. And that's because she started tapping. And she, started, she said after the session, she started noticing the symptoms of lupus disappearing. Now, she is a, a nurse. She is well-trained, and she definitely knows what she's talking about. Heather McKean is another one of those people. Tiffany Jeffers. Hundreds of people have cleared out, changed, improved relationships, pains, fears, phobias, panic attacks, because they discovered how to change their self. And that's what we're all about, changing herself, liking herself. And also, I have how to keep your head on when everybody else is losing yours, theirs. And that is, I'm gonna show you how to sail through the tough times and not let it tear you down. Because I don't know about you, I've had some tough times in the last year and a half. I have new fans who really, really like what I do. So anyway, so I just keep tapping myself, love myself and be nice to myself. And also, I gotta get going because we gotta go to another place. So talk to you later, peace. FasterFT.com and also there's a live training course. Talk to you later. Bye.